Okay, we're back live with the final part of uh, this week's first ever uh, Twitch TV Chesscom broadcast, Hack Attack with International Master Thomas Rundle. You can find me on Twitter at T.E. Rundle. Uh, to finish this off, I've selected one of my games from the three-minute uh, series that I had against National Master Amazingoid. Uh, and in this game I had the black pieces and uh, it was a French, so I'm just going to play through the game now slightly slower than obviously uh, when we played. So we had a French Tarash, so knight out to d2, knight c6, the Guimar variation, and both sides just develop. And then e takes d5, which gives us a kind of exchange Tarash. But the knight on d2 isn't really a fantastic piece in this variation. So it's not really a, a very scary variation for black to face. Bishop comes out to b5 to pin on the knight on c6. Both sides develop for a little bit. h3 stopping anything coming to g4. And here, yeah, I jumped in with knight to e4. It's interesting just looking at my play now, trying to work out if it's any good. Yeah, it seems okay for the time being. So the idea is just to take uh, control of the centre here. And if uh, if white captures with uh, knight takes e4, then I can retake with the pawn, for example. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, knight e4, he played knight back to f1. Bishop back to f6. One of the ideas here is just to uh, allow me to push this pawn forward to f5. Knight e3, knight e7, protecting d5. Back to d3 in here. Okay, and this is probably about the end of the opening. And I guess I was fairly happy around about here. Because, you know, with black... Normally all you're trying to do from the opening is just equalise. But here black's done a little bit more than that. That knight on e4 is a really good piece. Um, and I've got a bit of a space advantage. And with this pawn on f5, and I, I think I said many, many times, uh, I like to have this pawn on f5 just because it gives black some good attacking prospects. And already I was looking for ways of pushing it further down the board. Okay, so he attacked the centre with c4, c6, just to solidify things on d5 he took a couple of times and went queen b3 and then king h8 and basically what i'm saying when i go king h8 is that fine you can have this pawn on b7 i don't really care i mean it's it, it's a pawn i suppose but uh if you take it then you're giving me more time to attack your king what i wouldn't do is allow white to take this pawn on d5. At least I wouldn't let him do it on purpose. But now if he plays knight takes d5. Uh, I can recapture with knight takes d5. Queen takes d5. And then bishop h2 check. A discovered attack. The bishop on h2 hits the king on g1. And I've got queen takes queen on d5 on the next go. Okay. Knight e5. Pawn up to f4, and knight takes d5. So he does grab this extra pawn, but uh, things aren't so simple after knight, after queen to a5 here. Hitting both the knight on d5 and the uh, rook on e4. Let me just see if I can do this. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay. Now... I, I remember thinking that maybe he had a better move here than knight back to c3. Just wondering what it is. Um, okay, he can't really go rook takes e4, bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4. Because I still have queen e1 check at the end. So, yeah, maybe he was right. He just brought the knight back to c3 here. And then, okay, I took on e5, took on e4, took on d4, and there goes the pawn back. But things are still all pretty equal at this stage. But around about here was where I was saying, I'm really looking to get f3 in at the first opportunity that it's not a ridiculously bad move. 
But okay, bishop d2 attacks. Well, I don't really like the queen on the same diagonal as that bishop, so swinging the queen over to h5 here. Knight b5 to hit the bishop, which dropped back to b6. Bishop c3, knight f5. So here you can see that uh, all of my pieces are, are starting to take their places next to his king. Uh, knight on f5, ready to jump into g3 if needs be. Bishop on b6, attacking f2 and pinning the pawn on f2 to the king on g1. Rook on f8, vaguely ready for when things open up on the f line. It's only the rook on a8, which isn't really doing anything. And two moves later, I bring it across to e8, pinning this bishop on e4. And I think it was around about here, after queen c2, knight g3, knight d6 that uh, I kind of felt that uh, I should have a win in this position. So let's just take a time out here to have a think and see, does, does black have a win here? Because I have e4 covered three times. You know, I look at this position now and maybe what I played was the right thing to do. Uh, I just took on e4 here with knight takes e4. Uh, so he has to recapture with the knight. Anything else and I'm winning material. So rook takes e4 just walks into a pin. And I can also just play bishop takes e4 there. Maybe you can play knight takes e8. If he plays knight takes e8 then I have bishop takes f2 here. That feels like really bad news. So okay he took on e4 and then f3. This was the move that that I'd been trying to get in for forever basically. And he'd been trying to stop me from getting in. And uh, with good reason. Here, not only am I threatening the knight on e4 more times than he's defending. So queen, bishop and rook are all attacking. It's only defended by the queen and rook. But uh, I'm also threatening to open things up with f takes g2 and attack down on f2. So the only move that dealt with both of those tricks was pawn to g4. And I'm kind of looking at this position now and can't I just play queen takes h3? And then mate on g2. That would have been a far simpler way of doing it. But uh, okay, I'd seen a tactic. So rook takes e4. Winning a piece. If he had to take back, rook takes e4. And now queen g3 check. A nice forcing finish to the game. If you're looking for ways to win, then always look for the forcing moves. Look for the checks. Look for the captures. Uh, because so long as you're forcing your opponents to do things, they can't get counterplay against you. That's the main thing. So king h1 allows queen g2 mate, so king f1 is the only move, but it's all over after queen d g2 check, king e1, and queen g1 with back rank mate. And uh, that was one of the few three minute games that I managed to win against Amazingoid, who, uh, well okay, not one of the few, I mean he, he beat me in the nine game series, he beat me five games to four, but he was very, very impressive. Uh, I felt like I got into something more of a rhythm in the one minute. Maybe I played a little bit faster and uh, and things went my way. But anyway, it was a lot of fun and I'd like to thank my opponent Amazingoid for a lot of fun games uh, on chess.com. Uh, apart from that, uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. I hope you enjoyed our Twitch TV broadcast here for chess.com. Uh, I've been International Master Thomas Randall. You can follow me on Twitter at T E Randall. Uh, thanks to John or at Hong Kong John who's been producing and helping me uh, and you know pouring me a drink occasionally during these videos. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be online with the same same kind of broadcast in a week's time. So I hope to see you next Monday evening. Have a good week and uh, see you real soon. Okay, thank you very much.